In August, the U.S.-China tech war took a bizarre and unexpected turn. The Trump administration engineered a controversial deal to let NVIDIA resume selling its less powerful but still highly sought-after AI chips to China. For a moment, it looked like a breakthrough, a way for Chinese tech giants to finally get the American hardware they desperately need. The only problem? Beijing is now telling those very companies not to buy them. This is a stunning turn of events. Industry analysts agree that Chinese companies still covet these chips. So why is their own government standing in the way? It looks like economic self-sabotage. But this isn't a contradiction. Here's the real story. This is a declaration of technological independence. China is now willing to accept short-term pain, forcing its companies to use inferior domestic hardware for the long-term strategic prize of a fully independent AI ecosystem, free from American control. To understand this geopolitical gamble, we need to trace the story from its roots, from the years of escalating U.S. pressure that made technological reliance an existential threat, to the forging of a national champion in Huawei, and finally, to China's generational bet on self-reliance that will reshape the global technology landscape. Let's unpack this. To understand why Beijing is willing to risk so much, you first have to understand the crisis that forced its hand. For nearly two decades, after China joined the World Trade Organization in 2001, the U.S.-China tech relationship was built on a simple premise. America would provide the high-end technology, and China would provide the manufacturing scale. It was a partnership that brought lower prices to U.S. consumers and massive profits to American corporations. But beneath the surface, that relationship was fracturing. From Washington's perspective, China wasn't playing fair. There were accusations of intellectual property theft, state subsidies creating national champion companies, and forced technology transfers. This growing tension finally erupted in 2019, when the first Trump administration placed the tech giant Huawei on a trade blacklist. On the surface, this was about cutting off access to Google's Android. But the real damage was a far deeper, more strategic strike. The White House invoked a powerful mechanism, the Foreign Direct Product Rule. It states that any company, anywhere in the world, that uses American technology, software, or equipment cannot sell its products to a blacklisted entity without a U.S. license. And TSMC, the Taiwanese semiconductor manufacturer with a near monopoly on advanced chip making, runs its factories on American-made equipment. Overnight, China's most innovative company could design world-class chips, but it had no one to build them. The choke point was real. For Beijing, this was more than a corporate crisis. It was a moment of terrifying clarity. For years, China had been heavily dependent on foreign technology, and this is evidenced by its trade deficit in electrical machinery, including semiconductor chips, which ballooned from $15 billion in 2001 to $217 billion in 2021. It was paying billions for foreign intellectual property it couldn't replicate. From China's perspective, they realized that if their national champion could be crippled by a single foreign decree, then their entire economic future was built on a foundation of sand. Dependency was no longer a business risk, it was an unacceptable national security threat. And Beijing didn't wait. The response was immediate and immense. It poured tens of billions of dollars into a national investment vehicle known as the Big Fund, with a clear mission to build a homegrown semiconductor supply chain from the ground up. This set the stage for the next phase of the conflict. By 2025, with the rise of generative AI, the original strategy was supercharged. In a Politburo study session that April, President Xi Jinping called for a renewed nationwide mobilization to build an independent and controllable AI ecosystem. 
This wasn't just an internal perception. Even the CEO of NVIDIA, Jensen Huang, warned that U.S. overregulation would only incentivize China to out-innovate those getting in its way. The stage was set for a radical strategic pivot, away from integration and toward a U.S.-China confrontation over cutting technology. This shift from global partner to techno-nationalist rival is a pattern we see across critical industries. Identifying these foundational cracks before they erupt into global headlines is the kind of analysis we do every week in our newsletter, ARPU. If you want to understand the hidden vulnerabilities of a globally connected tech ecosystem, you'll find the link in the description. Faced with this crisis, Beijing needed more than just a policy. It needed a national champion, a single, powerful entity with the technical expertise and state backing to lead this industrial moonshot. And the company forced into that role was the very one that had been the target of America's first strike, Huawei. As the U.S. campaign intensified, Huawei was transformed into a martyr-like figure in China. The very restrictions designed to cripple it, as one analyst put it, became the steroids for its AI hardware and software development. Huawei's mission was not just to survive, but to build a complete parallel universe of AI technology, a full-stack homegrown alternative for every layer of the US-dominated ecosystem. First, the hardware. Huawei accelerated the development of its Ascend series AI accelerators, like the new P910C, designed as a direct domestic rival to NVIDIA's GPUs. Second, the system. Since US sanctions prevent it from building a single chip as powerful as NVIDIA's best, Huawei adopted a different strategy, brute force. Its cloud matrix system connects more than five times as many accelerators as NVIDIA's top-tier rack. It's a power-hungry behemoth that, through sheer scale, aims to achieve comparable performance. And third, and most critical, the software. The deepest part of NVIDIA's moat isn't its hardware, it's CUDA, the software ecosystem that allows thousands of chips to work together as one. In response, Huawei has developed its own alternative, CAN, and is now open sourcing it in a desperate bid to build the developer community and break NVIDIA's monopoly. Huawei isn't just planning to build a new chip, it is planning to build an entire AI ecosystem as a Chinese alternative to NVIDIA. But building the weapons for this new tech war was one thing. Getting your own side to use them was another challenge entirely. But building an alternative to NVIDIA is only half the battle. Huawei was now facing a classic chicken and egg problem. To improve its chips, it needed massive revenue for R&D and real-world feedback from a huge customer base. But why would commercially driven giants like Alibaba or Tencent choose Huawei's less proven, more power-hungry system when the superior NVIDIA alternative was available? As innovators like DeepSeek had already discovered, the domestic hardware simply wasn't ready for the most demanding tasks. Left to market forces alone, China's national champion would struggle to find its first customers. So if market forces couldn't solve the problem, what could? State power. This is where the news from August becomes the critical piece of the puzzle. Beijing's guidance to its tech companies wasn't a friendly suggestion. It was a strategic act of market engineering designed to break the stalemate. The directive was specific. It strongly discouraged the use of NVIDIA's H20 chips, particularly for any government or national security-related work. This move instantly created a protected, captive market for Huawei, a guaranteed customer base that would provide the revenue and the real-world data needed to improve its products. This wasn't a full-blown ban. It was something far more sophisticated. As Leonard Heem, a researcher at the RAND Corporation, put it, Beijing appears to be using regulatory uncertainty to create a captive market sufficiently sized to absorb Huawei's supply, while still allowing purchases of H20s to meet actual demands. It was a brilliant, if brutal, solution to an impossible business problem. 
But enforcing this choice, Beijing is demanding that its own companies pay a steep price, both at the cutting edge of innovation and in the commercial heart of their operations. But this declaration of independence comes at a staggering cost. To understand the real price China is paying, we need to look at two different technological battles happening simultaneously. First, there's the battle for the absolute cutting edge. This is where China's national champions go head-to-head -head with NVIDIA's best technology, the top-tier Blackwell chips that are banned from being sold to China. And in this arena, the verdict is brutal. The technological gap is real and severe. The most damning evidence comes from China's breakout star, DeepSeek. After achieving its initial success on NVIDIA hardware, the company was encouraged to train its next-generation R2 model using Huawei's Ascend processors. According to a Financial Times report, the attempt failed. DeepSeek encountered persistent technical issues and was ultimately forced to revert to NVIDIA chips for the critical training phase. It proves that for frontier-level tasks, China's domestic hardware is not a viable alternative. This is the hard technological ceiling. But there's a second, more complicated battle happening in the mainstream. This is the fight between Huawei's new Ascend P910C and the chip the US is allowing into China, the downgraded H20. And here, the choice for China's tech giants becomes incredibly difficult. These firms are now caught between their government's strategic imperative to buy domestic and their own commercial imperative to build the most efficient and cost-effective AI infrastructure to win in their hyper-competitive local market. On paper, Huawei's system offers superior raw performance to the nerfed H20, but achieving this comes at a significantly higher cost in both price and power, making a power-hungry and expensive behemoth. This forces a terrible choice, obey the mandate and build on a costly, inefficient platform, or defy it to compete more effectively in the short term. So this is the true price of self-reliance. At the frontier, China faces a hard technological ceiling, and in the mainstream, its companies face a painful commercial choice between two imperfect options. This quickly becomes a costly generational bet on self-reliance. So how does China solve a problem of its own making? How does it win a long-term war when its own homegrown hardware is both technologically behind and commercially inefficient? The answer is that China is playing a different game with different rules, and it has a massive hidden advantage that the West often overlooks, energy. Huawei's brute force approach, linking thousands of less advanced chips, is incredibly power hungry. In a Western market, where data centers are already straining electrical grids and facing soaring energy costs, this strategy would be a non-starter. But China's math is different. Its state-controlled industrial policy allows it to build out energy infrastructure at a scale and speed that is unimaginable in the West. According to a report published by Anthropic, last year China added 400 gigawatts of power capacity. The U.S., by comparison, added only several dozen, just one-tenth of China's total. This creates a powerful economic buffer. Electricity costs in the U.S. are more than double those in China. That massive difference softens the blow of running less efficient hardware, allowing China to pursue a strategy of scale that would be financially crippling for its American rivals. The AI arms race, it turns out, isn't just about who can design the smartest chip. It's also about who can build the power plants and the grid to support a new generation of energy-intensive computing. And in that race, China is already years ahead. So, we return to the question from the start. Why is China rejecting the very chips its companies desperately need? The answer is that Beijing is no longer playing the same short-term game as the West. The pain of using inferior hardware today is a calculated investment in the sovereignty of tomorrow. Every time a Chinese company is forced to buy a domestic chip, it's a vote paid for with cash and efficiency in a future free 
from American technological leverage. This isn't just about competition anymore. It's the beginning of a great technological schism. The U.S. strategy of using choke points and sanctions has not stopped China's rise. It has simply forced it onto a different, more isolated, and more aggressively state-driven path. The result is the deliberate creation of a parallel AI stack, a complete non-American ecosystem of hardware, software, and standards. We are witnessing the balkanization of the global technology landscape in real time. This raises profound second-order questions for the entire world. What does an internet run on two fundamentally different competing AI infrastructures look like? Will it accelerate innovation through competition, or will it create digital walls that stifle global progress? And with China building a self-reliant system that it can export without restriction, who will win the battle for influence in the developing world? Deconstructing these second-order consequences is what our newsletter, ARPU, is all about. We go beyond the headlines to analyze the strategic ripple effects of tech's biggest stories. To understand what this new era of technological division means for businesses and investors, you can subscribe at the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.